Hello and welcome to Marketing91.com. The accelerator model states that if technology and thus the capital output ratio is held constant, an increase in output can be achieved only through an increase in capital stock. Delta I equals accelerator into delta C. Thus, accelerator equals delta I divided by delta C. The capital output ratio shows that the demand for capital goods is not only derived from consumer goods but also from the direct demand for national output. The production of a given amount of output requires a certain amount of capital. The required amount of capital can be calculated using the equation K equals WY where K is the capital stock, Y is level of output and W is the capital output ratio or the accelerator. Therefore. W equals to K divided by Y and it is assumed constant in the accelerator theory. For example, if the capital output ratio W is 3, then a capital stock K of Rs 1500 is required to produce output Y worth Rs 500. Similarly, a capital stock of Rs 1800 is required to produce output worth Rs 600. The capital output ratio formula changes with change in time period. For instance, let us denote a particular time period by t and preceding time periods by t minus 1 and t minus 2. Subsequent time periods become t plus 1 and t plus 2. Assume that in time period t minus 1, the desired capital stock was sufficient to produce the level of output for the period. Thus, if the output rises from y t minus 1 to y t in period t, the desired capital stock will also rise to k t, that is, k t minus 1 equals w y t minus 1. Now let's understand the working of the acceleration principle. The assumptions are capital to output ratio is 2 and is constant. The average life of the capital goods is assumed to be 10 years and in each period replacement investment is assumed to be 10% of the capital stock in period 1. There is absence of excess capacity and therefore investment will increase in response to an increase in demand for output. As discussed in the assumptions, the capital output ratio is 2 and the replacement investment is 10% of the capital in period 1, that is 10% of 200 which equals to 20. In P1 and P2, the output is 100 and the capital is 2 times the output which is 200. The net investment is 0 as it equals W which is 2, difference in capital of current and preceding year which is 200 minus 00, 0 equals 0. Gross investment is replacement investment plus net investment that is 20 plus 0 equals 20. In P3, the demand for output rises by 10. Therefore, gross investment rises from 20 to 40. In P4, the demand for output rises by 10. However, gross investment remains at 40 as in P3. This is because to maintain the gross investment at a higher level after it has been increased, the output should continue to rise at the same absolute rate. In P5, the absolute increase in output is higher than that from P3 and P4. Therefore, gross investment increases to 80. In P6, gross investment falls to 60 despite the increase in output because the absolute increase in output from P5 to P6 is lower than that from P4 to P5. This decrease shows that a slight decline in the extent of absolute increase in the output leads to an absolute decrease in the gross investment. In P7, when the output remains constant, the net investment becomes zero. Gross investment does not fall to zero but reduces to replacement investment. In P8, when the output falls by 10, the net investment falls by 20 and gross investment becomes zero. When the economy is moving downwards, the gross investment can fall only up to zero. The value of the accelerator during the downturn is limited by the inability of the demand for investment goods to fall below the value of the replacement demand. Thus, in P9, gross investment falls to zero only. The excess of negative investment gives rise to excess capacity. Limitations of the accelerator are Capital output ratio is not constant. Excess capacity. Temporary rise in demand. Non-availability of resources. Time lag. And non-availability of finance. 
Moving on to super multiplier. The theory of super multiplier shows the interaction between the multiplier and accelerator. When the accelerator effect is combined with the multiplier effect, that is, the effects of changes in income or consumption and investment on each other are combined, we get a super multiplier. The super multiplier shows that an autonomous increase in the level of investment raises income by a multiple whose value is based on the multiplier. An increase in income will lead to an increase in investment through the acceleration effect. The effect of the super multiplier is greater than that of a simple multiplier. The super multiplier indicates that fluctuations in employment, output and income are brought about by changes in investment or consumption. Increase in autonomous investment delta IA leads to increase in income through multiplier that is delta Y equals K into delta IA which further leads to increase in induced investment delta ID through accelerator A delta ID equals W into delta Y. This finally results in increase in income and aggregate demand by larger amount. The above interaction between the multiplier and accelerator has been mathematically explained as Y equals C plus I where Y is income, C is consumption and I is investment. Because investment can be divided into autonomous investment IA and induced investment ID, hence Y equals C plus IA plus ID or delta Y equals delta C plus delta IA plus delta ID. Because a change in consumption, delta C, is equal to the marginal propensity to consume times a change in income, hence delta C equals C delta Y. Similarly, a change in induced investment is equal to accelerator times a change in income, that is, delta ID equals W into delta Y. Substituting for delta C and delta ID from the above equations, we get the following equation. Delta Y equals C into Delta Y plus Delta IA plus W into Delta Y. The above equation for income shows that changes in income depend upon the values of MPC and the capital output ratio or accelerator and changes in the amount of autonomous investment. Thank you.